meeting, given the fact that both Liz and Peter are, are remote. Um, it's five o'clock. Uh, I'd like to call the, the select board meeting to order. Um, looks like we've got some guests here. Um, we'd just like to ask the guests that when they speak, just announce who you are and um, that way Sarah can get it into the meeting minutes and record any kind of uh, interaction that we have. Um, first item on the agenda is just to uh, amend the agenda. Sarah, do we have any other amendments um, other than what is sitting in front of us? Um, right, You're, we're going to amend it because of the request from Adrian McGee regarding the emergency watershed program um, about remediation. If, if the town would be interested in completing some of the lower cost remediation strategies, such as debris removal, and I'm suggesting, depending on the time, uh, if that we can do a um, an executive session for personnel matters, I, I can do the citations and contracts at the end of the meeting. Okay. Uh, and you're proposing doing that after all of the other business? At the very end, after all the other business. Okay. Can I also add, maybe this is just under other business, um, to mention that we're doing a town hall um, walkthrough presentation on the warning question next Tuesday. You're warning that, aren't you, Sarah? I've already warned it. Yeah. Okay. Is that it for amendments? Jeff, Victor, you guys have anything? Um, do we have a motion to accept this agenda as amended? Yes. I vote. Do we have to approve the meetings of 12324 first? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll circle back to that. I got ahead of myself. Okay. <laughs> Do we have a second? Better than behind. <laughs> Do we have a second for the agenda? Uh, Victor, seconds that. Okay. Uh, all in favor of approving the agenda as amended? Say aye. 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 Any who oppose, please say nay. Um, approving minutes of the 123-24 special select board meeting. Um, action likely. Um, myself and Peter, I believe, are not able to uh, vote on this because we didn't attend. Correct. I can make the motion. Okay. So approving the minutes of the 12324 special select board meeting. And do we have a second? And all those who would like to approve the uh, minutes as they sit, please say aye. 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 And that's all members voting aye, Sarah. Okay. Um, Welch Park Drive public hearing. Um, the, uh, there was a site visit at Welch Park, Welch Park Drive uh, pursuant to uh, Title 19, um, Chapter 7. Uh, Liz, myself, uh, Victor, uh, Eric, and Carl Balin attended. Um, I don't know what else you need as far as on the record for that, Sarah. Um, there were no, no public uh, attendees. Um, so it says that we'll reconvene here uh, to conduct the public hearing of accepting the 1,019 feet plus or minus of Welch Park Drive, currently a private road as a class three town road. Uh, this hearing may be delayed. Well, it's not delayed because of the site visit. Um, and the select board is tasked with determining whether or not the public good necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of Middlesex require this change per procedure specified in 19 VSA, subsection 711. Um, public and interested parties are invited to attend and participate in this public hearing uh, with no action. Um, next uh, 
item is accepting the Welch Park Drive as a Class 3 town road. Uh, does anybody have any comments, questions, concerns? I, I just have a quick comment, which is to uh, remind everyone that the whole reason we are doing this is to precipitate the dissolution of Welch Park, which has been a project we've been working on for for years. So this is this is our part of the deal. We will give up uh, all responsibility for for water systems and other things, but we will assume the responsibility for the road, which seems like a fair trade off. We have been plowing the road anyway to get access to our fire station. So I obviously strongly recommend that we uh, that we take this action. Any of the other board members have comments, questions, concerns? I, the only question that I didn't uh, didn't quite follow was uh, the trade-off is we're going to take and, and make the road a class three and and maintain it. I understand that, but what was the trade-off about the water? Trade -off that we have no response about, no responsibility for that. For that, right now we have a prorated responsibility for that pumping station, the pond, uh, the other infrastructure that has to do with Welch Park, which we don't use and don't expect to ever uh, ever use. Well, is that is that accurate? Don't we use it to uh, for our fire truck to fill? Didn't didn't you say that uh, in a private conversation, Eric? They're talking about the potable uh, water. You're talking about the potable water? Or, what I'm concerned about yeah. is that we, we, we discussed, well, isn't the potable water, isn't that in a well over in the woods? It doesn't have anything to do with the pond, does it? No, each, each lot, based on the explanations I've received thus far, have their own well system. Yeah. And uh, currently the town is responsible, shared responsibility for all of the potable waters at the site, even though they're individually supplied to the buildings. And this act would essentially remove our responsibility from the potable water, but we would remain having access to the, the pond itself. Is that correct, Peter? Yes, and, and the pond, I mean, we, we get access to the pond for fire control, for charging, for charging those uh, hydrants, which are gonna be now within our right of way. Um, but we have no responsibility for the, for the fire pump itself or any of the infrastructure which has to do with the sprinkler system at the, uh, at the, uh, what I call a telephone building. Uh, the other issue is, uh, by giving up the potable water problem, we give up all the inspections and certifications and other things which have to be done every year because that is technically a public water supply. And I, I think one other piece of the puzzle, at least as I understand it, is that part of moving towards this, um, you know, moving away from the partnership is current, currently, right, currently we pay all of the bills for this and then have to go get reimbursed for okay. the funds that we expend, yeah. um, which has been a, an ongoing issue some may pay on time and others may not. That's definitely been an ongoing issue and it's also an annoyance and we don't get compensated for it. We've got, we've got plenty to do without doing that. Uh, and quite, quite frankly, the, the town residents shouldn't be having to front the money for other entities and paying those bills up front. Um, we shouldn't be burdened with that. I couldn't agree more. Okay. So with, um, with that, if it's if it's a we concluded the public hearing and now we're ready for the motion. I was just going to ask any of the guests if anybody had any oh, okay. questions, comments, concerns that they wanted to bring to the board. It doesn't it doesn't look so. Um, so yeah, I think we're I think we're at a point where we can discuss action. So I think the action is just just approving a motion to uh, to accept the road, and then there's some work to be done. We have 
filings to do with the state and whatever we will get. We will get some uh, participation from the state to help us maintain that road. Really? Oh. Yeah, it becomes a class three road. Make the motion. I mean, it's not going to be a lot. It's a pretty short road, but every little bit helps. Do we have a motion I to? Um, Go ahead. If you want to finish. I was just going to say, yeah. do we have a motion to accept uh, Welch Park? Drive as a class three town road. I make the motion that we accept. Uh, I'll make it. No, I got it, Peter. I got it. You, you got it. it. You can second. Second. <laughs> make a motion that we we uh, make Welch Park uh, Drive a uh, class three road in the town of Middlesex. Okay. Did you and you're good with seconding that, Peter? Sure. Thank you. You got that, Sarah. Uh, great, making progress on Welch Park. Uh, uh, next item on the agenda. We didn't vote. We got a vote. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Bef do you want your? Do you want to ask your question before we vote? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of uh, accepting Welch Park Drive as a Class Three town road, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it. Could you ask them to sign the completion certification of the highway that's right there? We need to submit that. Okay. Yeah, that's next on the agenda. Okay, but the, before you do the certificate of highway mileage, you gotta do the completion. Okay, so those are two separate documents, then not just one? They are not. Okay. Sign that, then you can do the certificate of highway mileage. And do you need a separate motion for that? Or is that should that be included in the other one? We didn't include it, so um, I have here in front of me a certificate of completion and opening of a highway and pu for public travel uh, in regards to the Welch Park uh, action that we just took. Um, everybody's approved that. I guess we can sign that here. Um, we've got three here, Sarah. That'll work. That works for you, okay? No. Um, next item on the agenda, um, approving the certificate of highway mileage with Welch Park, Welch Park Drive added, action likely. Um, so in front of me, I have our certificate of highway mileage for year ending February 10th, 2024. It looks like we have a total of 64.89 uh, miles with, um, and this includes Welch Park Drive. There right. doesn't show a change here, Sarah. Is that no. what you would expect? Yeah, what we do is we submit this to the state, and just to clarify, just to get this into the record, the state uh, filled out this top part. I see this. Right. But no, we don't change. We're we'll, we'll So even though there's no change from previous yeah, mileage, you I will, I will do that later. Okay. <laughs> but I just also want to say that this is um, the town. I, I'm just going to think. I think you all know that the state is adding new roads to the interstate where it connects with Center Road. We got the interstate Route 2, right? So that's what that other part is there. Anybody has any? Everybody understands that? You're cool with that? Because you're going to sign off on that. Yes, it's the approaches to oh. to Route Two. Yes. Yeah. Are there any other any other changes other than those two? I don't think so. We haven't discontinued any drive any. We haven't discontinued or downgraded any roads. Not yet. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, do we have a motion to approve the signing of this uh, certificate of highway mileage? Make a motion that we approve the certificate of highway mileage. Do we have a second? Sure. Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the approval of the certificate certificate of highway mileage, please uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Please say nay. The ayes have it. Great. Okay. 
Uh, two for two. Sorry, sorry, Victor. Didn't quite get it. I need the exercise. No problem. Um, question. Yes. Now that this is not a private road, are we going to need to change that sign because it says private on it? Yeah. At the uh, junction of two. Yep. It has uh, PVT on it. Yep. Okay. I will get one. It's a little duct tape. Yes, <laughs> green tape. Regardless, I would just say, regardless of the sign, everybody's thought that's been a town road anyway. But otherwise, than those officials who know better or know better. Well, I was for the ones that didn't read. <laughs> um, all right, moving along. Uh, we have the. Uh, Highway report. Updates on road conditions, uh, action possible. We have everything running. <laughs> we have what? Knock on wood. We don't have any equipment down. It's all running. It's all running. Okay. Yes, it is. Um, well, that's really something. It is. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, looking good uh, as far as Equipment wise, roads, uh, yeah, we're still rutted up and frozen, so be mindful of that until we can do something different and weather changes. But looked like you'd been out doing something. I saw portal trying to, the yeah, craters were much better, yeah, trying. And, and you're and and you're stocking up on inch and a half stone, yes, for, for mud, mud season, mud season, yes. I figured it was a good week for it, being the weather was decent. Could everybody hear that? Stocking up on stone. Yes. yes, inch and a half clean stone, yes. Um, and then we have a uh, change order for the work to be done on uh, Davy Road and Upper Sunnybrook Road for next summer that we had written up for all seasons. That they, since they were doing the work anyway, and uh, I don't know if you guys were able to see a copy of that. Yeah, I think everybody yeah. has a copy. I've seen it. Um, I I don't believe that this is something that we can just give to all seasons. I think it's got to be put out to bid, just like any other work, um, through the appropriate procurement process. Um, Okay. You know, the addition of the work, it's essentially a different project. Um, well, okay. That's my, that's my take on it. Um, I don't think we're following procurement by, by um, creating additional work and, and just including it in the previous uh, RFP. I also think FEMA would require us to put it out to bid, right? We're presuming this is FEMA eligible work. Can I just ask a port of order clarification? Is this for the Davy Road project that was already bid? And this is an extension? So yes. why would this be next summer? Because that was supposed to be done by November of 2023. I'm, I'm very confused, and I need to keep it straight in the minutes. Well, it was discovered during the uh, I see. During the work that was done on Sunny, Upper Sunny Burke and Davy Road, it was discovered that it was needed. I see. Okay. And I mean, I understand what you're saying about FEMA, but I think this came this uh, uh, this agreement or uh, uh, addendum uh, is an, is uh, I think it's n the normal way of doing uh, uh, extra work that is required or or seen uh, on any project that's already let. I think the issue I think that I, I'm looking at with this, mm -hmm. um, it, I mean, part of it's the time frame difference between the emergency work that's already been completed, and it's not like they're there, and, and it was found, and then it was, it's just added to through a typical change order. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to be six plus months in between when they did this other work okay. and when this would potentially take place. Um, so for me, that's a clear separation of project. I, you know, it, 
don't don't get me wrong. I'm not. I understand where you're coming from. I'm just trying to explain. I mean, obviously, I, I, you know, I, I looked at it. Um, I think you're going to see that that. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Is that that whole phase is done? No, there's no way they it. There's no way that they, they could finish it. We it right, and we, and we stopped it. Basically, told them that to come back in the summer and finish it for spring. Uh, I also think uh, from experience that if you ask another contractor to come in and do that little bit of work, which I guess we don't care how much it costs, I mean, we're paying 25%, but it would be much more money. And usually you just, you give it to the guy that's already got the contract. And that, I think that's, if it comes in that the others are that much more money, I mean, that's going through that process, I mean, these guys would be awarded Anyway, at that point, um, yeah. You know, I, I, I guess I don't have a whole lot of it to say. I mean, that's my my take on this, and open it up to others to to provide feedback. Uh, Peter, my my real question and concern about this is if we're presuming that this is going to be female eligible, which I believe we would be. I just want to be sure we're following the. FEMA rules, and if they require us to put it out to bid, we should put it out to bid. On the other hand, if they say it's a change to a change to an existing project, then I could go either way on it. I mean, if, if we had the approval from FEMA, FEMA and they said that we met their procurement guidelines, um, I would support that as well, as long as we had their go ahead. Uh, Liz, did you have comment? Yeah, I just wanted to, I just wanted to say my only concern with um with that is the that the contract was had a specific date to it that ended 12/31/2023. And so that's the attached part thing this, that we're looking at. Yeah. I'm sorry. Part of this would be extending the date of the I mean, we need to extend the date of the contract anyway because the work is not completed right. but certainly if we accept this change order we definitely need to extend the date of the contract Dorinda is, is this B work or C work this was the original contract that we had to do for Davy Road and Upper Sunny Road was that the safety it's, work? That was not the safety work. It's office. not the safety work. So this, 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 was was this was all C work. Okay. And what we did with right. East Hill and uh, Center Road is we made that B work. And that was, B, that was the only part that was B work. It's my understanding. So this okay. is permanent work, right? This is permanent. It is, this is C work permanent. It is. Okay. It is. It could be wrong, but it is my understanding that Steve, didn't Steve say when we met with him that uh, he'd passed that? by FEMA, a jury, and that they were okay with it. And that's, I think that's why he went, I mean, I'm, I'm not speaking for Steve, but I think that's why he went ahead and made this. Yeah, I think, speaking of our FEMA project manager, there's a transition there. Mm -hmm. I think we would wanna pass that by the new, uh, the, our new representative there I and make sure that they're on on clear on that as well and you know have them respond through email or something giving us written approval for that i think that's that would be fine yeah okay. we met with him what monday not this a week ago steve not yes steve. steve and he had said that he had met with a new guy or had a conversation with him i was on the we can ask him we can ask steve yeah, I would I would say just let's go back to the new representative and have them give us something saying that they they approve it and if that's the case then I would I would change my stance. We would table this for tonight then. Yeah, Peter. I was I was just going to say I've been going uh back and forth with our uh with our new representative and my appraisal of him is 
he's a brand new green bean and he doesn't know where the restroom is yet, let alone how to deal with any of these problems. I mean, I was I was asking him for help finding finding someone who could potentially help us with this paperwork and take the pressure off our clerk and treasurer. And he made this big deal of bucking it up the ladder. And two days later, he got back to me and said, FEMA didn't have anybody that they worked with, which I know for a fact is not true. And I found out later is definitely not true. So we need to be careful of him. Well, with that said, uh, we'll have to check with, have Steve check with him. Yeah. And we'll just hold off on this until, I guess, the next meeting. Is that the consensus of the board? It sounds yeah. like sounds like it is. Um, okay, uh, treasurers. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, did the no. highway department have any other? I think that was it. I think. I'm thinking. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Um, treasurer's report, uh, Welch Park insurance questions and how volunteer firefighters are paid. Dorinda. Okay, let's start with Welch Park. Um, I have several bills here. One is for the uh, commercial lines policy for Welch Park that begins 315. So it's for $2,323. So based on us, I mean, where do we stand as far as the association? Is that gone as of yet, or do we have to pay? Dealing with, dealing with the road was the first step. My understanding is we have a draft uh, dissolution agreement, which we should have to, uh, we should have to review. Um, I, I will follow up on that as soon as the meeting's over, but uh, that's a good goal would be to finish this up before we need to renew that policy. Which is 315, so that would have yeah. to be oh, oh. by yeah, your first we're meeting in March. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we also just received yesterday three bills from the Watershed Consulting Associates out of Burlington for the billing period that ran through from November to December 31st. Um, and it's for a total of $791. It's for professional fees, water resource uh, subcontractors for a general permit for a renewal and stormwater inspection and reporting. Would you would you mind scanning and sending me a copy of that? Absolutely. I believe I believe the uh, oh Christ I can't think of their name the company that owns the telephone building has agreed to yeah. take care of that but I'm not certain of that and since Welch Park still existed on those dates it may be that that's the last bill we have to pay i don't know but let me let me make sure this sounds oh, like it's part of the transition that i mean for them to go in and do this i haven't seen bills from watershed consulting before so I, that's why i'm a little i don't recall ever seeing this company in the past but i'll scan them and I, them. I, I couldn't agree more i, I don't know but i will find out and i'll get back to you Okay. You could just see them over to mayor. Yep. When do those do? The, these are due, um, let's see, due date 3 1 and 3 1. Okay, well, we've got a little time. Um, and then we also re did receive our annual bill from the Agency of Natural Resources for Welch Park Access Road stormwater operating fee. And that's, yeah. so is that one something that we will pay? And what's the date on that? 3-1. Due date, 3-1. Okay. I think the answer is we're gonna have to pay that this year. The process, as it was explained to me, was that they wanna keep that as a separate because I asked the question, I said, why isn't that just automatically included 
in our town overall permit? Why is it a separate thing? And they said for one year, it needs to remain a separate thing. But again, let me, let me follow up on that also. Didn't we send in, I thought we signed some kind of paperwork not too long ago to combine them or something like that. We were gonna be combining them into one permit. Right, and they got back to us and said we couldn't do it. Oh, okay. Anyway, all right. that's all part of this lovely process we're going through, but we've, we've jumped the big hurdle tonight, so. So this one should be pay. No, I'm not saying that. Please send that to me also. This one to you too, okay. Okay. All right, that works for me. Thank you. Um, so that takes care of that one. Um, in case you guys didn't see the note on it, the bond bank said they had requests for $35 million. Um, so we haven't heard how they were going to go to the state and all, but um, to see, you know, how that's all going to work. But we still don't have any idea of how much we will get. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you were up to date on that. The other thing is ARPA. Um, I just wanted to give you a reminder that uh, we have to do our annual reporting by April 1st um, for any money that we're um, allocating between, uh, between April of last year and March 31st of this current year. Um, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has sent out some information recommending that we obligate all of our ARPA funds before March 31st, if possible. Um, they think we're better off trying to get this reported in this period as opposed to next period. And then expend all the remaining ARPA funds as soon as possible. Um, and that's just their recommendations. They, you can go on their website and read all their reasoning to it. There's, um, we can use the revenue for flood damage. We can just use it as um, services to the town. There's a lot of different ways you can report it. So, um, but I wanted to just put that in the back of your heads that maybe you want to be making a decision on this sooner than later. And originally we had talked and it was it was approved to use as because we were under the threshold for money we could do it for general expenses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's they are allowed, I mean there is some limitations but it, it's long as it goes for um, services. I think I can't remember the actual verbiage now but as long as it's a service, you know, like our roads, it could go for, it can go for mitigation, it can go for water supplies, it can go for, I mean. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of my knee-jerk reactions is, you know, we still have FEMA match to think about, you know, all the money that we put into the roads and, and whatnot. Um, so, like, I need more time to think about it, but just a knee-jerk reaction that maybe that's a, we've used the ARPA money for it's, cash flow for just that reason, yeah. and maybe this is the time to say that's what we dedicate it to. Um, Peter, you've got your hand up, and, and then Liz, you've got your hand well, up as well. Yeah, all, I was, all I was gonna suggest is that we had that list that we generated for use of the ARPA money, and before we just throw it all into the flood, we should at least look over that list and make sure that's what we want to do. So I would propose I would propose that we put that on for the next meeting possibly. Can you can you add that but to the agenda? Make sense, it may make sense just to throw it all into the flood stuff and, and have it over with. But I just wanna I'd like to I'd like to look at that list one more time before we do that is what I'm saying. They also said you can transfer it to your general fund as long as you formally designate it on the record in a regular meeting to pay for municipal personal expenses to create a fund balance. So it sounds like we might be able to put it into a fund balance. Um, but they are... Uh, the other thing you might want to consider is, I mean, you're talking about 
uh, a two hundred thousand um, dollar expense for a grader. You know, if you trying to avoid future debt service is always been one of my goals, and I think we've done well by doing that. Um, especially looking at what the interest rates are um, compared to just having this money sit in a fund. So that's something you may want to consider as well. Just a parting recommendation. Yeah. Land excavator, then you. Yeah. Uh, excavator, sorry, did I say great? Yeah, great. I mean, it, it, yeah. Whatever, it's all equipment. <laughs> Liz, uh, They're all big expensive things, yes. yes. Liz, you had your hand up. Um, yes. So just quickly, didn't we actually spend the ARPA money and we're talking about at some point getting reimbursed for it and then spending it? Right. We, we've borrowed the ARPA money is what okay. we've done to keep, instead of having to borrow the full $2 million, um, on our line of credit, we used all of our fund balance and our ARPA fund to pay for $500,000 worth of the flood expenses. Okay, so it sounds like we will add that to the agenda of the next meeting um, and dig up the list of, of wish list items for ARPA and have that discussion. Victor? First. Dorinda, uh, when you said that about the uh, the excavator, does that mean that we could put that money towards the purchase of this this one here, or would that be down the road for next time? No, I think it. If I mean, it was I just didn't just, understand which way it go. No, it would be for this one that you're talking about. You know, if you don't want, I know it's on the the um, warning yeah. to have it approved, but nothing says you have to spend it. Or you don't even, maybe you only want to borrow 100000 and put 100000 towards, you okay. know, to lower the debt service. Yeah. I'm just saying I'd be pretty creative with this money. And Yeah, I just didn't quite understand yeah. which way that would yeah. go. Thank you. And the last thing was um, after last week's uh, talk briefly about the fire department's um, pay or stipends or whatever you wanted to call it, that they are essentially, um, I sent out the letter to everybody, they are essentially operating under our federal ID. So they are technically employees despite what they're not. Uh, we were told last week that they're not employees. So I just need to get a clear, I want everybody to realize they mm -hmm. are going to be paid by a W-2 this year. And as of right now, they're going to be paid based on the stipends that were submitted, unless you guys advise differently. And can can you refresh my memory as far as how those stipends are, are determined? Because I did read in there that they can't be paid on an hourly basis. It's it not like a call was... basis, or, but it can be for training and things like that. Um, Hold on, Jeff. I'll get right to you here in a minute. Uh, I, I'd have to pull up the other stuff. This one isn't it, but. But are, are the current the current situation with those is it's an hourly stipend. Is that how that's set up now? It's our part thereof. It's mainly by call. Okay, so they get a base fee per call. Well, yes, it's our or part thereof. So it's not like exact hour pay. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. So once so you're in once you're into the next hour yeah. you get the next increment yeah. of Okay. Yeah, that was one of the things that caught my eye. I don't know if anybody else caught that. Reading I saw too, that, but, but I, there was other things that led to, that you read into that, and it's like, okay, that really is kind of null and void. Okay. Because of the way we're set up. Right. Um, Jeff, you had your hand up? Yeah, so I read through this stuff last night and today, and I disagree with the, with that we're employees of the town. Um, number one, it was agreed on when we made this 
that the members would be separate from the town. The only thing on membership wise was the select board would approve the fire chief that we elected. And as far as I know, that's gone for the last two years. I haven't heard for sure that you guys have voted on that. Um, and the other thing too is I also, in all the references that I read, one of which being from South Carolina, which I don't know really how it applies to Vermont. I don't either, but it was sent to us from the Department of Labor. Um, that um, I don't see anywhere in there if your fire departments or firefighters are considered employees that they don't have to be paid minimum wage. And I'm not I'm not pushing for minimum wage this year on the on. The budget because we didn't we didn't plan on that it was just a suggestion that, that when I had a meeting in Berlin they said you guys should be if you're part of the town you should be at least getting minimum wage so that's why I brought that up I'm not pushing for that now but I don't see how in the state of Vermont you could be consider, considered an employee and not be getting at least a minimum wage I just that will boggle my mind in this state in this day and age so the, it falls under the from, um, the federal labor uh, yeah, volunteer remember. exemption, and essentially that exempt public employers from paying minimum wage and overtime to individuals who qualify as volunteers, motivated to contribute services for civic, charitable, or humanitarian reasons. An individual who performs services for a public agency qualifies as a volunteer if the individual receives no compensation or is paid expenses, reasonable benefits, or a nominal fee to perform the services for which the individual volunteered for. But it, it says there that the firefighters and employees, when they are subject to the will and control of the person or entity for whom they perform the services. Well, that's why I'm bringing it to the board because we do have, um, I think we need to be clear as to how, you know, have a clear understanding of, because they are being paid, they've always been paid a 1099 in the past because they were a separate entity. Now a W-2 is issued for all employees and we're being told we have to issue it as a W-2. Jeff, the last time you were here and we started talking about this, you were looking at what the stipend netted out with the hours that, that you paid or we paid. Right, and Eric year. ran the numbers and it would, uh, yeah. it would go over yeah. what? Yeah, it would go over what our new budget would be, but I don't remember what the numbers were. So once once I heard it, it went over. It's like, okay, we're not we're not pushing it for this one. Um, thank you. And it's also by doing W twos that we are then picking up the employer's portion of taxes, payroll taxes as well, which current in the past the members were having to pay the employer's portion, the full amount. Liz has it. Uh, Liz? Um, God, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting my question. Um, it's oh, about the- COVID symptoms. No. I know it's about the, um, oh, I know what it is. The budget that the fire department came up with that we've already approved and are presenting to the voters, does that, that was based on the regular old stipend, wasn't it? That was based on our this year's stipend 1087. Yes. So, if this were something that we needed to change, we may have to do that on the floor at the town meeting. Because we've already come up with the number. Yeah, that's why I said we're not we're not pushing to do it, but if we're being pushed that we're employees, and I interpret I have a different interpretation of this, that we're employees and we don't have to be paid minimum wage. Um, 
but for the budget proposal for town meeting, we're not pushing for the minimum wage stipend at this point. So one of that's the just so far that, away. I mean, that's like, you know, July 2026 would be the next opportunity. Oh, no, I'm sorry, 2025. There, excuse me, there, there's got to be an answer to this of what's the correct way to do it. And for us to sit here and read rules and regulations and interpret them, I think it's a mistake. I think I think we should find out what the correct way is and whether that's from the League of Cities and Towns or whether it's from uh, the State Department of Labor or whoever it is, if, if that exemption that you brought up, Dorinda, applies, I think we're all set the way we are. Uh, if it doesn't, then we probably have to transition into the, into the uh, minimum wage. I mean, maybe we need to be W-2, but not be subject to minimum wage. I don't know the answer, but we, can, we should ought to be able to find out. The guidance that was included in this email specifically states that um, the W-2 is a requirement. They're, it's illegal to pay the volunteers on an hourly basis. And it, this, this line item here says, once a firefighter is no longer a volunteer, so this is the key, then the Fair Labor Standards Act's rules on minimum wage and overtime apply. But as long as they are volunteer firefighters, those rules do not apply. That's clearly outlined in this guidance. And this came from Rinda read to us sounded like they are still volunteers even though they get a W two. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's the answer. I don't know. We're comfortable that's the answer, then that's the way we should go. If we're not, we should find out. I mean this for me, yeah, this is the guy. Right to me. I'm, I'm not trying to. <laughs> I'm not trying to cause a problem, but I'm just saying, you know, what are all the other fire departments doing? What's the guidance? You know, if that's the guidance, and we can say based on this, we're saying that they're still volunteers, therefore we're not subject to minimum wage, but we do give them a W two. Uh, we're gonna pick up. We're gonna pick half. Pick up half the FICA, whatever that is, seven point four percent. Um, they're also going to be uh, eligible for the retirement system too, right, Dorinda? No. They're not? No. no. You have to work at least 24 hours a week and 1,040 hours a year. Okay, good. And what about, what about, uh, what about unemployment and all that buoy? They're, um, we're already paying like workers comp and all that through our passive program. Right, so right. All that, that's already being included. Right, we've been paying that. Right. right, so this is just, and this did come from the League of Cities and Towns and the Wage and Labor Board. And um, Cheryl was the one that reached out and got all this information. Does anybody else have comment on that before we move on? Okay. Um, Brenda, do you still have anything regarding the treasurer's um, report? Let's see. That, put the home bank. Nope, those were the only ones. Okay. Um, so I believe all of the board members have. Uh, an email communication regarding the emergency watershed um, from Adrian Megida. Um, it looks like they're looking for some input from uh, the board and have a couple of clarifying questions um, so that they can, uh, they're looking at some language choices. Um, so the questions are, uh, is it possible that the town of Middlesex would be interested in completing some of the lower cost remediation strategies such as debris removal? This could count as an in-kind contribution towards the 25% project sponsor match. 
And if so, the selected engineer consultant would need to prepare a plan of operations for the town to supply construction services. And the second question is, um, they want to confirm that this is a contract will be between the town of Middlesex and the selected engineering consultant, and also between the town and the selected construction company. Um, it's their understanding that uh, CVRPC is helping facilitate the process, but would not be handling actual grant funds. Anybody have any feedback uh, or comments on that? Peter? I just think until we get to the end of the flood recovery that we've all better get our hands on, we shouldn't be taking on any other additional expenses. And I would, I, I mean, in a, in a perfect world, it would be great for us to, to help to get rid of some of that debris. But uh, I think, we've, I think we've, we've got enough on our plate right now without taking that on. That's just my feeling. My feeling. I agree. Same here. Liz? Liz, do you have any comments? Uh, yes. Is this the same thing that Adrian has been working on? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yes. So I thought, first of all, it was a 75% municipal match, and then we get reimbursed. Or is this something different related to that? That the town people, the towns, Covers seventy five percent, and the homeowner pays twenty five percent. Am I talking about something different? I thought that was the watershed. Is this something different? So, Liz, I think the town's going to get reimbursed seventy five percent. The question that you had earlier was the town is going to have to pay for this stuff and then get reimbursed. That's one of the big issues. Well, you'll be reimbursed at 75%. Then there's this remaining 25% that the homeowners are responsible for. And I think that what this is trying to do is cut in to that 25% match that the homeowners are responsible for. Okay, yeah. it doesn't right. say that though. So that's what I'd want to be clear about. Um, and also, I I really am, I, this the whole point of this, grant we have not decided that we're not going to support this the whole point of this grant is to prevent worse things happening it just happened to coincide with a terrible flood and we've had to spend all our money on it and i'm not saying that like that you know we have to do this but like not doing this is going to cause us more grief down the road because we will have more flooding the roads will have damage, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't think we're ready to just to turn in and say, no, we're not doing this. And I, I don't know as if that's what's on the table, but uh, Peter, you got a question, comment? Well, I, so as I understand this, the, the purpose of this is that they are afraid that a number of the homeowners who are in this situation are not going to be able to come up with a 25%. So what they're saying is, you know, to make these projects go forward, if the town agrees to pay some of that or all of it, um, that would allow these projects to go forward. And my only concern is, Liz, I, I think it would be great if we could do it, but, you know, where's all that money going to come from? I don't know. FEMA's not going to be taking care of us every time there's a damage. That's all I'm saying is that this could the, the whole point of this is to avoid costlier. I, I get it. I problems. get it. And and it's not just about our roads. It's about losing homes, right? Like this is not. This is a much bigger problem, as we know. And I don't think I don't think we've made a decision that we're just not doing this because we don't have the money right now. I, that's all I'm saying. I don't think that this is a matter of money. They're actually asking the the question as I read it is would the town be interested in in dedicating in kind resources so the road crew going out and using town equipment to to clear debris. The concern that I have with that is, you know, as much as it's going to be useful We've got so much, other, so many other things on the plate for the town road crew that 
and I excuse the way I'm going to frame this, but it's another distraction from what we need to be doing. We have to be doing these other things, and the more we overfill their plate, and while it's all good and, and well, I support the effort, um, I just don't think we can do that to, to the road crew or to the, to the rest of the residents and, and say, hey, we want you to go clean up this debris to help this issue and forget about everything else you've got to do. That's my concern. So is I it- I agree with that. The question is, is this something we have to decide tonight or can we wait and see how many people apply for these grants, what we're really looking at? Uh, I, I'm not saying necessarily that we say no, no, no now. I think maybe what we say is maybe, but if they need an answer now, my answer would be no. I, I don't know, but I think that they need an answer now. Did you hear that? Sarah said she's not certain, but she feels like they do need an answer now. My understanding is that this only involves, what did they tell us, 10 people? Sarah? Something like that. Yeah, it yeah. was only nine or ten people that this involved, and um, the total cost was $460,000 for the cost of the project. Well, the next, well, we're talking about grant, basically. The, the next piece of that that I have concern with is, let's say we had time to do a little bit. How do you pick and choose which, which residence projects you go and you, you help complete debris removal on and, and you know, you're helping one but not all of them? It's, it's, for me, it's like if you say yes to one, you've got to dedicate yourself to every project that gets approved. And I just, again, I think we've got too many other things on our plate. Victor? Um, yeah, I've talked to, we, Eric and I have talked about this in, uh, more specifically, which is uh, we can't even uh, get a handle on down at uh, the bottom of McCullough Hill on Great Brook where it goes underneath our bridge and supposedly we, supposedly, uh, we had uh, permission to go 200 feet either way. We don't even have an excavator to go dig that out. And I don't think that this is, you know, if we're going to do this kind of stuff, I don't think uh, I don't think that maybe this group has a good handle on how much uh, how much time that's going to take. It's like down there. Where do you put that material? How do you haul that material off? How do you do it in the winter time? You know, and uh, I mean, I, I, I'd love to help them all, and uh, and and I'd like to do the bridge down there. But uh, right now, it's uh, it's not getting done. Liz, you had your hand up as well. Yeah, I just want to say back to this watershed shed grant. I did reach out to um, Sarah Waring from the USDA just to tell her the conundrum of the cost associated with it. You know that we would be required to up front up front the money, and were there you know was there any way around that? And um, anyway, she said even though it says USDA, um, it's really not her, but. Um, that this Mike LaPointe guy that you've been working with, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then she said, we're not the only town to worry about this. Um, and she does know of a program that I called the Flood Mitigation Swift Current, which is federal. Anyway, I passed that along to Adrian and I said, this might be something to at least look into this to see what this is. It's called Flood Mitigation Swift Current. Um, and so this is another, um, and, and Stephanie Smith from the state hazard mitigation office, um, is able to answer some questions about that. So Adrian has this information because we're, we, she's been helpful in making this not our project per se. Um, and, um. But anyway, as I said, I would be the contact from the select board on this. I went ahead and did that. So right. anyway, I think we're not at a point where we're, you know, probably I would agree with you, Randy, that we don't know. We don't we can't we can't. They're too busy. The road crew's too busy. Let's just say no. 
to that 20, helping with the 25% match. That would be my recommendation. Okay. Um, I want to be conscious of time. We're at six o'clock now. Uh, the question number two, um, you know, it would be my understanding that um, as town sponsor, if they did decide to move forward with this, the answer to, to the second question would be that they would be engaging with the town and we would be the ones having the contract with the contractor and not, um, and the engineering consultant. Is everybody, you know, in agreement there? So, as far as that, Sarah goes, it looks like everybody was nodding their heads. Um, uh, moving on, um, Liz, do you want to just mention your town hall walkthrough for next Tuesday that we added to the agenda? Yep, so um, we are just going to have a sort of open house at 6 p.m., I believe. Um, to just invite the public to see the presentation that we gave at the select board meeting the other day. Um, we'll have sort of poster board um, uh, of the of the drawings that VIA has done and Dave Megita will be giving tours of the building um, to point out the um, issues that the building is dealing with right now. Um, and then there'll be time for questions and then We'll do that. We'll be available on town meeting day as well in the hallway with the poster board and, you know, answering questions that people may have. So it's basically just we're going to explain if people are curious about what this question is and want to hear about it before they come to town meeting. This is an opportunity. Okay. Maybe I have the dog complaint. Yeah, I've got that next. Okay. Um, before I get there, uh, Sarah, I don't see in front of us the access permit for Portal Road. Oh, crap. Um, <laughs> and Eric's already left the meeting, so yeah. I don't know if we want to so, pass over that. Or, sure, it's not a big deal. Is the rest of the board okay with passing over the access permit for uh, Portal Road North Branch Vineyards till next meeting? Does it cause any problems for them? Sarah does not think so. And Eric's not here to speak to it, so. Okay. Um, okay. And the letter from Zach, is that just the email that was sent? Yeah. Um, I think I can pull that up quickly. Um, can you read in the dog one while I, sure. uh, do you mind doing that? Nope, thank you, sorry. Um, so we have, uh, we have a dog situation. I think I sent you guys the email. But it's from Heather McLean. Um, she's, and this is, this is the first formal complaint I've received. Although we've received a lot of rumors and conversations about these dogs at 99 French Road. We think they're at 99 French Road. They keep, they keep being aggressive and chasing after runners. And one time, Cheryl was driving by, and she said she saw them chewing on a deer, which is really bad. Um, we don't know who this, who the owners are, but we think they're coming from 99. So what I'm asking the um, Heather has said, I would like to log a complaint about a scary dog encounter on Sunday, January 28th. That was running on French Road around 8 or 8:30. Could have been a bit earlier or later. And the dog from House 99 chased me as I ran by. It was running right next to me, barking and growling in a really scary way. It was close enough to bite my hand or any other part of my body. I don't know where the property lines are, but I got to where I thought the property ended and it hesitated for a second, then continued chasing me for another 25 yards or so. As this was happening, the man who owns the dog was occasionally yelling for it to come back, but the dog completely ignored the owner. The dog was a typical dog size, white or cream colored or brown, black spots. It might have been part pit bull, but I really don't know dog breed, so take that with a grain of salt. At this point, no one I know feels safe running or walking on French Road after 6 a.m. because this kind of encounter happens so often and is so scary. As you know, the challenge is that French Road to Culver Hill is the flattest route around, so in the slippery winter or when recovering from illness or injuries, there are no other options if you want to go more than a mile. We would really appreciate the ability to run and walk there without getting chased. Thank you for your help on this. So I wondered if I could ask the select board for you to authorize me to send a letter on behalf of the board saying that we have received a formal com dog complaint these are, this is the procedure, keep your dogs restrained. If we, um, 
we'll be monitoring the situation, and if we get another, and if it, and if it gets uh, too bad, we're going to have to have the dog owner, the dog control, animal control confiscate the dogs because I do not have a license for anybody at 99 French Road, and I never have. That's my question. Dogs, dogs, dogs. Is the dog from 99 French Road? We think it is, and the guy from 99 was calling it back. But you know, you never. We don't. Ha I don't have a dog. I don't have a license, so I don't know. I don't I've know where the dog owns. They could call. They should be able to contact me and say, "That's not my dog. It's my neighbor's dog, or it's a visiting dog, or whatever, uh, something I'm, like that." Is Erica still doing anything? For yeah, that? she and I were. Well, we're. We, we. She's yes. She's having. She hasn't had much success. So we're hoping that maybe a select board letter would get those guys' attention and uh, ask them for a response and what they're going to do to restrain the dogs and when they're going to license those dogs. Does the dog actually leave their property? Apparently so. It's on French Road. I live right up around the corner, and I I think I know which house that is. And We walk with our dog on a leash all the time, and yeah. we've interacted with a dog there, but it's old, and it does come up, and he's always yelling at it, but I'm not sure it's the same critter. That's the problem. We just don't know whose dog it is. could be... Charlie's visiting from out of town. Yeah, I don't, I know that house too. And those dogs have never been, they might have new dogs now because I don't remember them really being annoying, like scary. I know, that's what makes They must have new dogs like... if they're chasing. Well, um, yeah, I give you, I think you should have authority to write the letter. And ask them to um, get their dogs yeah. licensed. Get the dogs licensed and explain to them if they are chasing animals and are chasing to stop doing it. Yeah, or identify that it's not their dog. And, um... Then we'll work from there. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, other correspondence I have in front of me the letter. Uh, sent to the board from Zach, Zachary French, 58 Road, um, Middlesex Select Board members. Uh, based on the advice of my from my attorney, I will not take the board up on its offer to have me appear before it to discuss my ongoing problems with my neighbors. Should the town choose to take further action related to the letter sent from Main Street Law LLP on behalf of the town. Please refer all correspondence to my attorney, Norman Blaze, at 802-865-0095, 1233 uh, Shelburne Road, Suite C4, South Burlington, Vermont. Sincerely, Zach French of 58B Road. Um, that is it for correspondence. Um, are there any other matters that uh, come before the board? Is that correspondence? Is uh, I got that in an email. Is that the same one you got? Yes, that's the one I just read. That's the one you sent it out? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what about the one Evelyn Prim sent out? Uh, I mean, I don't, if we're supposed to put out all the correspondence, put out all the correspondence. Yeah, that's, that just came yesterday, right? I, I think I read it yesterday, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, yesterday. Yeah, I've got it right here. It says, did Pam hear off right? Do you want me to? I, I've got it right here. I can just read it from here. That's fine. Um, uh, so correspondence from Evelyn French Prim. Um, good afternoon, Middlesex Select Board. I trust that you received the letter from my husband, Zach French, declining the board's offer to speak at the 2-6 meeting regarding the continued issues with our neighbor. We both hope, hope the town discontinues to entertain these untruthful, baseless, and defamatory allegations against us. As we've said before, you are welcome to visit the road anytime you'd like. All we want is to live in peace and for our neighbors to find a new hobby other than watching us through their surveillance cameras. Sincerely, Evelyn French Prim. That's that one. Were there any other communications regarding this? Not that I know of. I don't, I didn't have any other. Peter has a same though. Uh, Peter? You know, 
I'm sick of those people down there. And I don't know who's right and who's wrong about all this, but if they've hired an attorney, I think we need to spend a little of our money, and hopefully it's very little, and have our attorney correspond with their attorney and try and get some kind of written agreement that everybody can live with. I'm not interested. I mean, I one of these days, one of these days, we're gonna we're gonna get a writ requiring us to show up in court. I mean, we can't just, you know, we said if these things continued, we would issue tickets, we would do this and that. Uh, I looked at those photos. It didn't look like anything to me, but, you know, we've got to resolve this. They've chosen to retain legal counsel. I think we should, this is a situation where we should use our legal counsel. And believe me, I don't want to spend a lot of money, but it's worth worth him having a couple of conversations or a conversation um, with their attorney and just see if they can't work something out. That's my that's my opinion. In regards to this communication or in regards to his, our attempt to ask him to come to the select board and his denial of that, I mean, where, what are you thinking whole, here? Just just the whole the whole problem that obviously, you know, we've got a neighborhood dispute. We've tried to mediate it the best we could. It hasn't worked. Um, we're not willing, or at least I don't believe we're willing to issue tickets um, based on the information I've seen. I'm not certainly not willing to uh, issue a ticket. Um, I mean, drive around town after a snowstorm. There's snowballs all over the place in the road, you know, from plows and driveway plows and snow blowers and everything under the sun. They didn't look like big chunks of ice to me. Now, I didn't go down there and inspect them. All I did was look at the photos. but. For some reason, for some reason, these people can't get along, and I'm sick of it. And I think they're trying to put the town in the middle of this, and I don't like it. Same. So this, I don't agree with this being a neighbor dispute. So I can tell you there are issues outside of the town that I'm not bringing to the town. It is the town's responsibility with the roadway. Every, I mean, there's legislation on it. You know, we've had meetings. You guys have physically come out and said, this is the road, 22 feet. I didn't realize it was that wide, but that was what you guys decided. 22 feet. You defined it. Everyone agreed to it. You asked us not to put anything in it. No obstructions. Everyone agreed. Then a, then a rock was thrown in there. Much smaller than this ice chunk that was not a snowball. Much smaller, in about probably the same position in the road. And then that's what triggered the legal letter. The legal letter is going off of legislation. It's, it's the law. You can't place obstructions in a roadway. I, I just I don't really understand why it's taking so long for there to be action and why action is not being done. Like this is a law. You know, you can see it from the the cease and desist letter that came from the lawyer. You know, it's we plow the road. In the video, and I can show you, I brought a magnifying glass if you guys need it. If you can't zoom in on your computers. That is evidence. So I have two videos. One of him putting an ice chunk that's probably a foot tall into the roadway. I have another one with him using his hands. And then I have a video showing it on my way home. I just don't understand. Like To me, that seems intentional. If it wasn't, why wasn't it moved after it happened? It's, it's not a snowball. It's an obstruction in the roadway. You know, this isn't a hobby. We hate coming here. We don't get good results. I absolutely hate coming to you guys for help. But but as select board members, this is your responsibility. That's why I keep coming to you guys, asking for help. Anybody else have anything to say on this matter? Yeah. What? Liz? Liz? Well, I mean, I think we did give, um, uh Zach an opportunity to come and explain himself as to why he had a watering can out on the road watering the side of the road um and he did uh and and about the the snowball um the snow chunk um and he has he declined um, and so, you know, my recommendation is that our next step was going to be that we fine him. And so we send a letter and a fine to his lawyer. 
I mean, if he's not going to explain it and there's evidence that he's he's doing things in the roadway that he, we asked him not to do, then we just to send him a fine. Any other board members? Uh, yeah. No, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't. I'd like to resolve this, but I don't. Uh, I agree with Peter and stuff. I mean, I don't see that. Uh, you know, that was a big issue uh, when I say that about the uh, the snowball or whatever it was. I mean, and, and, and it's not anything against either any of these, any of you. I just don't see it. Uh, and I, you know, uh, I mean, if it happened on my road, I wouldn't worry about it. Go ahead. So you wouldn't mind obstruction being placed in the roadway that you have to travel home? Or someone no. placing water no, because it's happened. Way. I've been here 50 years, and it's happened for 50 years. And no, as long as I can drive around it, I don't let it bother me. So that's not the law, like the actual law. It's not like so. So with flood damage, I'm sure you guys are bombarded with phone calls, right? Mm -hmm. With with the road eroding. Now, is your response to them? It's not the middle of the road, so we're not concerned. Or is that just a response to me? because you would advise that Mead Road should be 22 feet wide. That's a one lane road currently. So as things are being placed in the road, I don't have a second lane. You know, can I go around it? Yes. Well, you said that yourself. That's what yes. I'm drawing on, exactly I, yes, what I you said. Yes, I can go around it. Right. But it's illegal. I mean, I, I've read the statute before. I mean, Steve probably has as well. It's in the, the, the letter from the lawyer. You know, it's illegal. So I, I just want a point of clarification here, the roadway versus right of way, and I think those terms are used interchangeably through this conversation, and, and I just want to be clear that the roadway was not identified as the 22 feet, it was the right of way at the 22 feet. And that is that correct? That's not what well, that was not my understanding. No. So I believe Vic said the roadway was 22 feet. The right of way is 50 feet. 49.1. Yeah, okay. uh, about okay. 50 okay. feet wide. 49.6. And, and oh. okay. this specific obstruction is far, like, like it's on the traveled portion of the road, and which is probably like the traveled portion is maybe what 12 feet wide? 11, Somewhere around 11 and there. 11 is 22. It's so for not this currently though for this we for this road yeah, plowing, plowing plowing 22 feet is We're just not un unattainable for this for this roadway right. without being completely obnoxious about it and yeah and that's not what's happening here and so so you would come out and measure said 22 feet keep everything out of there also it was said um last year you guys were supposed to come out have the road crew redefine grade wide in the road well that had never happened and then in july obviously we had the flood you guys have been busy so it, it still currently has not happened that was supposed to happen though but you had defined it as 22 feet what i'm talking about is not up to like the 22 feet it's on the drivable portion that's currently there that's one lane okay i i haven't seen a video i i saw a video where there was you know a chunk of ice, a snowball, whatever people want to call it. I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know what it is. But the video that I saw was literally on the edge of a driveway that was being kicked. I didn't see anything placed out in the middle of the roadway. So maybe I missed the video that you sent of that. I if can that's, show you. If and that's I, what and it is. But like I talked to Liz if last that's time. The if that's the case, then I would absolutely support our, you know, if it's our lawyer or us sending a, a letter to, with a fine attached to it per, you know, the discussions that we've had as a board up to this point. Um, you know, if it's, if it's moving, a, the, the one video that I saw, which was like kicking a snowball and it, it 
stayed in its place at the edge of the roadway, then I don't know as if I do support that effort. But um, so Peter, hold on one second. Steve's got a comment, and then I'll come back to you. All right. So the, we'd all agree that a snowball is something children throw at each other, right? Would you like me to take what's in that video and chuck it at either one of you? Sure. Go ahead. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Noted. Yeah. Peter. So look, guys. Every time we start talking about this, we have disputes about the facts. We have, you know, it, it, it sounds like deja vu all over again, Groundhog Day, whatever you want to call it. The Frenches have retained an attorney. They've told us they will not talk to us except through the attorney. I recommend we have our attorney talk to their attorney. And if there's no satisfactory resolution of this, then we go ahead with the finding process. The finding process and I remember we looked at this way back when, and I can't remember the facts, but it's not as simple as us just finding them. We have to go through this municipal process to do it. And I don't know what that entails. We've never done it. I'm not saying we can't do it. Our attorney can take a look at it. But I'm ready to say I'm through talking about this. I mean, these folks are never going to be happy with each other. And nothing we can do is gonna is gonna make them happy, as far as I can tell. So I think I think we turn it over to our attorney, and yes, it's gonna cost us a little money, but that's what attorneys are for. And then we've then we've taken the affirmative action uh, that these folks are looking for, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Okay, uh, last comment, Shelley. Well. It just, I had, I had written notes because I plowed the road too, and it's not, we're not plowing 22, but I had them take over with their tractor because my, I almost went off the road because it's icy where he waters the road. So I stopped doing it with our tractor, but it's more like 12 foot that's plowed, so it's like one lane. But what I'm seeing is by the select boards in action, this escalates every time. These two ice chunks, I drove by and were big, but this had been going on with other stuff being thrown in the middle of the road and they're trying to just not do anything, hoping it stops. So I agree with Peter. I think maybe if the attorney, our attorney for the town gets involved and just say, stop, don't touch the road. Regardless of anything else going on, don't touch the road. You know, I mean, I think that's all everybody's asking. And hopefully that he could get results. Well, we did, we did do that. I don't and it didn't work. Right. So what, my question to you is, and, and, and you know, it sounds like I'm, you know, I mean, I've been taunted for being, I'm not against anything. But basically, what do you want us to do? What, were, what, what, Samantha, if you were in our shoes, what would you suggest we do? Honestly, so, I mean, I would suggest that you do what you're, you say you're going to. You know, the last select board meeting, you said if he didn't, you know, come in, you were going to give him a fine. Okay. In August 2022, you said you were going to put a bridge out sign on the end of the road, on Mead yep. Road. I followed up with you a couple times that just never happened. Yeah. So I feel like I keep coming to you guys and I'm getting no results. So if, yeah, you've asked him a couple times to stop. I have brought you enough evidence to show that's not happening. So, I, I mean, you guys have resources. You have the Vermont leagues of cities and towns. You have other towns you can contact. You have a town lawyer. You know, I, I know you keep saying that you don't know what to do. You haven't experienced this, but it's, it's happening. I have the evidence, you know, I'm coming to you. And I feel like you should be taking steps to figure out, like I brought like legislation to you, you know, I've talked to police, like I'm, I've done all my homework to figure out that, that this is something you guys need to handle, yeah. you know, and, and it's been over a year. So I understand not knowing initially how to handle it and what to do. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I feel like there needs to be some accountability here, you know, like, yeah, you say it's never gonna stop, but yet if you keep allowing it, of course it's not gonna stop, you know? Okay. Got it. Make a motion that uh, somebody here uh, approaches our lawyer to get a hold of. You have a lawyer too. You that we can get a hold of. No. You don't have a lawyer on retainer. We're just going to talk. Not to not for town issues. No. There are other issues here besides that. Yes, I, I have a lawyer for separate personal issues. Yes. Okay. But and that doesn't enter into any of this. There's nothing 
this doesn't sway your thinking or anything towards No, this? everything I'm coming to you, I mean, you can go through, I, I have a ton of notes if you want me to read, you know, no, read no, what no, I've come no, to no, you on. It's I, all no, been I regarding don't. the roadway. Right. You know, yes, I've mentioned there have been personal issues, you know, but that's, you, you want to know the whole story. I'm not giving you the whole story, you know, but I am mentioning there is other personal issues and I right. feel like, you know, this is a way that I'm being harassed. That's my opinion, right. you know, but but the facts of the matter is we have policies, we have laws, and they're being broken. You know, I have the evidence that that's the facts. I'm, I'm trying to come to you with only what pertains to you as select board members or the road commissioner. And, and you know, in all due respect, I mean, uh, there's been more than one select board member that say, you know, you, you, you see the evidence, but yeah, and I just it. said he doesn't see so, it. I think. I so I'm just going to, I'm just going to bring this to this item to close and if if somebody wants to take action at this point I would suggest that they make a motion and other than that um, I would suggest that we just we move on from this I'd like to make a motion that we retain our legal counsel to uh, contact the French's and also deal with uh, or deal with deal with all the neighbors in an effort to resolve this, whether they were represented by legal counsel or not. And if he makes an agreement and then he violates the agreement, then we should fine him. But let our attorney deal with it, not us. We've, we, we've proven that we're unable to deal with this. We've tried to deal with it in good faith. We've tried to deal with it, but it's not working. And I understand, I understand the frustration. Do we have a second for well, that motion? Second. Jeff seconds. Sarah? And this is basically, so our legal counsel contacts the French legal counsel, correct? Yes. Okay. All those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 That's an aye for you, Liz. Uh, that's unanimous, Sarah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, at this point, uh, there's been a proposed executive session. Um, I have this citation. Yeah, Sarah's going to get me the citation so I can actually. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. The citation is 1 BSA 313, um, executive session 1, after making a specific find that premature general public knowledge clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage having to do with contracts, labor relations, agreements with employees, arbitration, mediation, grievances. I'm going to say, I'm going to say that we need to discuss the contract that we have with our current FEMA pro, uh, coordinator. And uh, that is uh, section one. And I don't, I think it would be a disadvantage to him to have that conversation in public. Okay. Uh, anybody want to follow through with that motion and and also you'd have to allow uh Dorinda and me in the in the meeting because both of, it, both of us have something to say okay do we have to read out the can no, we just rely on what you read yeah okay uh anybody willing to make a motion to enter into executive session per sarah's instruction make the motion that we enter into executive session per sarah's Mentioning. She said, Are you willing to include Dorinda and Sarah? I am willing to include Dorinda and Sarah because it's been requested. And do we have a second for that? Liz, Sarah? Okay. I'll second it. Yeah. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed? 